See the same for the weather. Looks like we're for a little wet. Yep. Sure come up sudden. I've seen freak storms, but nothing like this. Look, Wish, uh, I don't know if it's dry enough, but see if you can make up a fire and fill up some coffee. We'll feel like it. What's the damage? Just wet, mostly. Hey, what's your trouble? Well... I have seen some things in your favor. A strange man standing on the hill. It could have been a man. One of them disappeared right in front of us. All right, that's enough of that. Forget it. What's this all about? Oh, just seeing things bad enough. We're really in trouble. They start making it out to be a ghost. Mr. Favor. Gentlemen, I wasn't sure, but I thought I saw your fire. Then, in the confusion of the storm, was there something wrong? Where'd you come from? Over there, a place called Homeville. That's 50 miles from here. Correction, sir. It's three days, a dozen mountains, and one pair of good boots from here. <laughs> you walked the ways? Only since that uh, great beady-eyed monster I called good friend horse decided to part company with me and my wagon. And that on the open air side of a cliff. Whew. Aside from my neck, this was all that I managed to salvage. Who are you, anyway? My cob by name, sir. My cob. Entrepreneur by profession, and foot loose and foot sore by choice. Where are you headed? Before that four-legged trader and I parted company, I was trying to get to a town called Sloan's Crossing. That's another 50 miles from here. <sighs> yeah. And me with a pair of feet that just gave up walking. Perhaps I could ride along with you. Yeah, well, sure. We can find room in the supply wagon for you. But only as far as the next town. Fair enough? He who's hungry never finds the bread hard. 
Eminently fair enough, sir. Why don't you get that fire started? Get another customer for Stu. Yeah, well, have any of you Jaspers got any dry matches? Mine got all soaked. You got some dry ones in the supply wagon, ain't you? Well, they got all dumped and wet on, Mr. Paver. It's a fine thing. Everything's soaked. It's gonna take me forever to build a fire. Uh, possibly I can help. Get some fine shavings, huh? No idea it would really work. Not a man made the kind of trip he said he made in that kind of condition. Well, you should get him under some blankets. Uh, he's just tuckered out. Nothing a little hot broth won't help. Somebody come help carry him over under the wagon. I just thought of something. Huh? That rain we had soaked down everything and everyone real good. Except him, he's bone dry. Huh. Yeah, I thought so too. Takes a noon for things to dry out. And I like a chance to brew up some cherry elixir. Men are all gonna have colds after that wetting they got. Gotta have something for them. Well, what about that fella? What about him? Kind of a strange duck, isn't he? Not strange, dude. Just different. My cop. Sure is a queer name. Not as queer as some names I've come across. For instance, George Washington Wishbone. Oh, what's on your mind? Nothing. Just that name keeps teasing around in my mind like I'd heard or seen it somewhere before, but can't just say when or how. You said a couple of things. Well, then, like how he come into camp last night, bone dry in spite of all that rain. Just like it had fallen all around him instead of on him. What are you getting at? Nothing. Just saying there's something mighty strange about a fellow like that. Not strange, Wish. Just different. I heard of a man like that one time. Yeah, where? Down in the nations. A couple of years ago. Only he called himself, uh, Car... Cartiphilus, something like that. He was nothing but sore trouble, according to the story I heard. What kind of trouble? Uh, bad trouble. Seemed like after this fella showed up, nothing ever went right and everything went wrong. Fixing to boil up some of that wild cherry election, Mr. Wishbone? Cartophilus. Beg your pardon? What happened to those books I picked up in Tascosa? Books? For reading, you idiot. I had a whole box of them. They're in a supply wagon, Mr. Wishbone. Under that mule harness and sack of beans. Hope they didn't get wet. Adopted by the Wanderer, 
Batudeus, Ahasuerus, and Mycob. Mycob the Wanderer. Come on, let's hustle with that canvas so we can get out of here. Mushy, come on, give him a hand. Good service, Mr. Favor. Good morning. Ah, what a beautiful day. A storm brings such freshness to the world. Uh, Don't you feel that way, Mr. Favor? Cost me a half a day's travel and I'm missing some stock. It's hardly a blessing. That which is to be must be. Philosophy ain't going to get my cattle back. You have to admit, it eliminates fear of the future. Huh? Depends on where a man's going. Hey, take uh, Sloan's Crossing, for instance. It's a trail town, as wide open as a place can get. Hardly a peddler's paradise, especially a peddler with nothing to peddle. <laughs> with nothing to peddle. It's true that I've lost my stock, but you see, to a man of commerce, adversity is wedded to Dame Fortune. The turn of the wheel, so to speak. Today, disaster. Tomorrow, the end of the rainbow. Maybe in St. Louis or even Homeville, but not Sloan's Crossing. That's an open grave. You and I both know the only commerce a town like that understands begins and ends with a deck of cards and a stock of six-bit reservation firewater. Still, I must go there. Why? A man with an itch instead of a sense of security ought to know a dead end when he sees one. Not an end, no. A beginning. Not for me. For a man whose life is at stake. What do you mean? A man is going to be hanged at Sloan's Crossing for a murder which he did not commit. I can prove that he's innocent. The man is John Slade. Slay? I know, I know, a notorious criminal. A half-breed, they tell me, damned by the very savages that he led. But still, he's a man unjustly accused. Oh, come on, he's not even human. What he and his pack did on the Pecos and the Red, not even the grave can cover up. Fred, the only justice he's ever gonna see is at the end of a rope. For what he did before, perhaps you're right. But not in this case, not for this crime. On the very night, they say that he murdered a man in Sloan's Crossing. He occupied the hotel room next to mine at Homeville. He could not have possibly committed the murder. Slade's gonna have to balance up the books pretty soon. What difference does it make whether it's today or next week? The law is the difference. The law of the land that protects saints and sinners alike. That's up to you. I'm afraid when we get to the next town, you're gonna have to provide your own transportation. Sloan's Crossing is 30 miles out of our way. I may be late. That's your problem. You're riding the supply wagon with Mushy. I'm telling you untruth. Sink it, I knew it. By the way you spread the words and sneak up on a fella, ever see easy and polite like, I'd have believed every word of it if you just hadn't topped it off with the biggest whopper I ever heard of. Why, when you said this Hakem fella came from Africa 800 years ago, and he was educated, <laughs> well, you just gave the whole show away. <laughs> hey, look out! Now what? What are you trying to do? Oh, perhaps it was my fault. You see, I was talking to him as he was driving. how did it happen? Now, how do I know? Mikey? Okay. Well, Mr. Mike Cobb was telling me some funny stories of, about some folks he knew 18, 800 years ago. 800 years? Wishbone. Well, noon here. Mr. Favor. Keep your stories to yourself after this, all right? And try not to confuse him any more than you have to, huh? Oh, you're reading. Oh, 
sit down, sit down, Mushy. I'll do it. Oh, boy. I, uh, I sent Quince ahead to scout the river. All right. Then uh, I figure when we get up there, maybe we ought to lay over a few days. Let the uh, cattle get some fat on them, huh? Maybe. Maybe. Well, what do you think? Think about what? About what I'm talking about. Is it something the matter with you? What ain't something the matter with me? Well, you're sitting there like a gravestone, not listening to a thing I'm saying. Uh, something bothering you? This curiosity, question marks always bother me. Yeah. Mushy said something about uh, him saying uh, he knew some fellow who died 800 years ago. Well, Mushy gets things all confused. Yeah, well, probably so. Still, how do you walk through that rainstorm without getting wet? There's a line squally coming from behind it. No mystery about that. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. You ever hear the story of the Wanderer? The who? The Wanderer. It's a legend. Seems when Jesus was being taken to be crucified, he stopped in front of a, a shoemaker's shop and asked, could he rest a little bit? And the shoemaker said, no, tarry not before my house, but go on. Then Jesus said, it is you who must go on while others know rest. You shall travel forever. What's I got to do with the uh, peddler? Well, one of the shoemaker's names was my cop. Wishbone. My cub's a name that's as old as the Old Testament. Nothing legendary about it. It isn't just a name, it's the rest of it. Here, you read this. There's some stories about that legend in there. It says sometimes the wanderer brings good luck, but the others say that the wanderer was nothing but catastrophe married to disaster and committing bigamy with ruin. Well, we had nothing but bad luck since he showed up. Bad luck had nothing to do with that storm or the wagon breaking down. Two coincidences don't make a legend any more than old wife tales and ghosts and goblins come true. Now, do you want to get packed or do you want me to read you a couple of rhymes out of Mother Goose? Just had my say. All right. All right, now let's put her on. No, never mind. You stay here. It's all right. Good as new. Mr. Mycob, isn't there anything you can't do? The Turn the herd! Find them west! Can't use a river crossing, Mr. Fever. The country's full of that stuff. Luxburg. There's enough of it this side of the river to kill half the herd. Couldn't keep them out of it. Well, speaking of bad luck. And then there were two. It seems that for us, the wind doesn't blow and the cradle cannot rock. You always will yourself to sleep? Only when the bow is broken and the cradle needs repair, do you always read yourself to sleep? 
Yeah, not always. Depends on the book. Take this one. Very interesting. Oh, legends old and new. The seven cities of Cibola, jade mines of Montezuma, lost city of Atlantis, and even the legend of the Wanderer. Oh, the man of many faces. Cartophilus, Potadius, Sahasuros. And Mycob. You don't think... That... By me, legends and myths are exactly where they belong, between the covers of a book. But I'm afraid some of the men believe it. If we have any more bad luck, the responsibility's gonna fall on you. That's what the people at Hart's Corner in New York said two years ago. An omen of death, they called me. Doomsday on the hook. I guess I've presented you with quite a problem. What are you gonna do, dump me right here and now? No, I wouldn't do that. For no other reason that uh, I'm running this drive, not superstition. I'll do like I told you, I'll take you along to the next settlement. Say, there uh, is something about the legend of the Wanderer, though, that piques my interest. I understand from the book he was a man driven by a sense of guilt. He was in torment trying to make amends for an old injustice. Now, I can understand that man walking a hundred miles to save a renegade like John Slade, but... Now you question the integrity of an itinerant man of commerce. You sound like a cynic. I understand a cynic is a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Unfortunately, at the moment, I happen to know both. Good night, my cub. Sleep well. Mushy, you're gonna let that water boil away. Now get it up here. Yes, sir. Oh. I'd better get some bandages and plenty of lard. I think we'll cut those sleeves off. Mm. Get him something to sit on, somebody. Oh, I hope you know what you're doing. Wait, wait, let me get that first. Sit here, Mr. Wishbone. Cooking in a couple of days. I guess we can send Mushy's cooking for that long. Mushy, you'll drive the chuck wagon. Now, the only trouble is we'll have to pull somebody off the hood for the supply wagon. Perhaps I can help, Mr. Favor. What do you know about driving a team? I'm not an expert, but I can't follow the chuck wagon. Well, we do need every man we can on the herd in this rough country ahead. All right, then. We should go on the supply wagon. How long do you figure it'll be, my cub, before he can use his arms? Oh, it'll be at least a week. A week? Why, you're out of your a week of mushy's cooking? Oh, we'll have a mutiny on our hand. Uh, I can cook. Is there anything he can do? Well, one thing for sure. Can't be any worse than mushy's cooking. But, boss. But, Mr. Favor. Mr. Mushy, may I have the time, please? What, Mr. Micah? Oh, never mind, I'll get it. Hey! Go on here. Ah, I think I smell of this. I'm all right, I guess. 
Everything's ready. Oh, uh, well, you know, of course, that my cub is uh, just filling in for you. Sure he is. I hope you all have good appetites. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Us ramrods right. need our energy. Okay. There we are. Ha. Oh. Oh. Take all this stuff, too. Okay. Micah? Yep. Out of the witch's cauldron comes the magic of son of a gun stew, Hebrew style. I'm not hungry. Come on, eat it. Come on. Like it or not, it's the only way to keep up your strength. Huh? Good. Put your teeth in that. There you are. It's my second plate, huh? Better grab some before it's too late. I ain't hungry enough to eat that Jonah's grub. That peddler's a traveling disaster. You just mark my word. Miss Favor, you know it's true. You know that man's a jinx. Sloan's crossing after all. a little bit early today, ain't you, huh? Just talking to boys. What's so important you have to stop working the herd to talk it over? Mr. Favor, that peddler's a jinx. First it was a rain, then the wagon broke down. Then we run across that prairie of Larkspur. And now, we can't get across the river to break us because the river's up. And Mr. Favor, you know as well as I do, the river ain't usually up this time of year. And it was a wishbone. Oh, you sure can't blame Mike up for what happened to Wishbone. I can. What made Mushy stumble when he was carrying that hot water was a doll. A doll that a peddler was carving on. Anything else? Yes, sir. We want you to get rid of him right now. Thinking it over very carefully, this is the way it stacks up. I run this drive, and what I say goes, and I say Mike up can stay with us until Sloan's crossing. Mr. Favor, you, you might find yourself mighty long on cows and mighty short on drovers if anything else happens.
Mr. Mercy, is there any more flour? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Mycup. Thank you. Mr. Wishbone, ain't time to sleep yet. When a man's tired, the clock hasn't got anything to do with it. Mr. Wishbone, what's wrong? Nothing. Why are you acting like this? You wouldn't understand. Man just isn't fit for nothing if he don't think he can do something real good. Right? I guess. Even if it's just one little old thing, he's got to believe he can do that better than anybody else. That's right, too. Guess so. Well, I don't think that anymore. What do you mean? My cooking. What's the matter with your cooking? I used to think I was a pretty fair hand with a pot and a skillet. And better than most when it come to doctrine. That my cob showed me how wrong I was. Well, you better start looking for a new boss, Mushy. Mr. Wishbone, that's talking pretty foolish. No, sir. I tasted his cooking. I just couldn't face the men again with that stew of mine. Well, the men are always grumbling about their food. Well, the men got a right to grumble on a long drive like this. I never paid them any mind because I knew I was good. And I don't know that anymore. I just don't know nothing. You'll feel better when you get those bandages off, Mr. Wishbone. You'll see. The flower, Mr. Mycop. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mercy. Thank you very much. Anything you want? No. There's something I don't want. You. Your bad luck, your trouble, and I've had my fill. And no man could uh, run away from trouble no more than he can cut off his shadow and bury it. I can't peddle. All I gotta do is pack your gear and start you running. If you don't do it, I'll do it for you. No, not this way and not now. Maybe you don't hear so good. I said you're leaving tonight, right now. I leave when Mr. Favor tells me to and not before. Maybe I can change your mind. <laughs> I got work to do. I said, get out! I said, get out! You call me Jinx and Jonas, and then you close your mind to reason and truth. Now, look at me. Look past superstition and fear. 
and old tales of incantation and boiling pots and see me. I'm a man. I bleed. I rage. I laugh. I cry. I see. I feel. I even pray. But I'm still a myth. A denizen of the dark, a harbinger of disaster. And why? Because I've committed the crime of being different. Mountains are high and they're crooked and they're flat, but they're still mountains. And water is green and blue and white and it's still water. And I am still a man, just like you. I bring you no bad luck. I bring no disaster, and I certainly do not bring a myth to life that no man can do. Now I will leave. My cob. Aren't you forgetting something? Why, you let our stew cook too long, and you'll burn that pot midnight back. Me, I'm going to faint dead away. I don't get something to eat. Look, uh, you walk out on us now, and uh, we'll wind up eating steers out of our own herd. Come on and get it before we throw it out to the coyotes. All right, must you dish it up? Up. Except for one thing. Hmm? Funny. Since my cub joined the drive, one thing after another been pushing us towards Sloan Crossing. And now we're going that way. Thirty miles out of our way. But we're going that way. natural to a man with an uncontrollable itch. Moving. But why? There's no need now. What happened with Hunt is... Did not have to happen, but it did. And what is more, I let it happen. I let another man's fury take the place of my reason, and that is the cardinal act of idiocy. So you're running away? Not running. Walking. Call it... Uh, the better part of wisdom. Or perhaps uh, insurance against further trouble. You know, you can't run from trouble any more than you can run from a myth. Mr. Fader! Hunt! Well, I started running. I tried to turn him. His horse fell right in front of him. Just nothing we could do. Pretty bad, I wish. Oh, not a thing. This is as bad as it can get. Hopeless. I ought to be a doctor at Sloan's Crossing. Well, there's nothing a doctor can do. Nothing anybody can do. There's always something someone can do, Mr. Wishbone. Even if it's only a word, there's always something.
There you are. To help, nothing more. I'm going to die, ain't I? No, you're going to live. the difficult hours ahead. Now, medicine won't help. Science can't. Only faith. That is all we can give him. Pedler. I've been dreaming. Like when I was a kid. Feel like running forever. Racing all over the mountains. I ain't felt that way in a long time. What's it mean? It means that you're getting better. Wouldn't kid a fellow, would you? Now you get some rest. You stick around, you hear? And you must rest. I'll stick around. Ready. We ought to be in Sloan's Cross in a couple hours. Oh, no, no, Mr. Favor, not yet. Not yet? After the stink you made about getting to this town and traveling a hundred miles to save a man's life, and you say not yet? It's Hunt. I can't leave him until it's over. Well, the most he's got to live is a couple of hours at the outside. A man's last hours cannot be measured by the clock. What about Slade? Adler? A dying man's wish is sacred. I would be less than a man if I let him down. I can do only what I have to do when I must do it. No man can bend the hands of a clock any more than he can control his future. Adler? I reckon I was scared of you. I'm sorry. It's a funny thing, ain't it? Now you're a real sight of comfort to me.
think we still ought to make Sloan's crossing by sun up. My cop. You ever want to hire on as a permanent general, well, you got yourself a job. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Bye, Mr. Mike. Bye, Mr. Mushy. Thank you very much. What do you want? Do you have a prisoner named John Slade? No, not anymore, ain't. Folks around here got a little impatient. Busted in last night, took him out and lynched him. And me, well, I guess I didn't put up much of an argument, Slade being what he was and all. You, uh, you wouldn't be friends of his, would you? Oh, no, no. Uh, we just know of him. Thanks a lot. Strange, isn't it? I traveled all this distance, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Well, I don't know, my cub. Not at the hunt. I think it did to a few Callahans who got their fact and fantasy mixed up. I know it did to me. Well, where do you go from here? Wherever that strange little itch of mine takes me, I guess. As a matter of fact, this little metropolis looks like it could do with a bit of civilization. You're welcome back in the drive you want. Mm. Entrepreneurs and cattle don't mix. My business is people. Even if their business begins and ends with a deck of cars and a stock of reservation fire water. Who knows, perhaps I'm even going to saloon keeping business. As a sideline, of course. Good luck, my cub. And to you, Mr. Favor.
what is right. Who'll tell his mother where her boy died? Oh, somebody's daughter, somebody's pride. Who'll tell his mother? Oh! So wishbone, the supply wagon's back. Mr. Wishbone. Somebody's darling. Oh. You gave me a start. Where is everybody? Well, it was such a nice night, we decided to have a picnic. Picnic? We had a stampede, you knucklehead. Oh. Bet you're gonna help me on load, aren't you, Mr. Wishbone? I'll take that bet. Hey, where's Johnny Larkin? Well, he decided to stay in town. He what? Well, he said he wanted to get a couple of beers. Well, if you think I'm going to do Johnny Larkin's unloading while he socializes in the flesh pots of Zebulon, you got another thing coming. Now, what's the idea of riding into camp like that? What's the big rush? What's the matter? Uh, I guess I lost him. Lost who? I don't know, Wish. It's the darnest thing. A bunch of men wearing black masks took out after me right outside of Zebulon. Now what kind of trouble you got into? No trouble, Wish, no mask, no nothing. You get in a fight or something? Me fight. Now, you know I'm a lover. You made some smart remark to one of their women folk. I'm telling you, I didn't do a thing. I just had a couple of beers and I started riding outside of town. All of a sudden, somebody hollered, there he goes, that's the one who did it. Did what? Mushy, I didn't stop to ask him. Now, come on. You got some idea. Wish. I swear I don't. But I'll tell you one thing. That's an unfriendly town back there. They got no use for drovers at all. Look, I'm, I'm going to ease into the supply wagon for a while. And if uh, anybody comes asking for me, will you just tell them that I got to... Stand right still, all of you. I got him right here. What's the big idea? What are you doing here? Stand easy, friend. We've no business with you. Is this the man? That's the man. I don't know what you're talking about. What man? I didn't do anything. Take the prisoner's gun. Prisoner by order of who? By order of the regulators. Now, what makes you think you can come in and take a man out of this camp? I want to see some badges. Let's get on with it. Don't let that mask make you brave, mister. <laughs> Right there. Wait a minute. Hold it. Look, I don't know what this is all about. But I'm not your man. I swear to you, I'm not. You got me mixed up with somebody else. Now, just hear me out. You'll be heard. And not here. Not now. Mount up. What are we gonna do, Mr. Wishbone? Go get the boss. What are they gonna do with Mr. Larkin? I said go get the boss. Yes, sir. Now! You say they call themselves the regulators, huh? That's right. Maybe we better call in the men. Now, the herd scattered the way it is, I'll need every man I got in the saddle. I'll look into it. Maybe I better come with you. No, I'll need you here, too. Well, you might be riding into a bind, a bad one. Yeah, and that's why I get paid all that extra money. now. But I want you to be real sure. 
Have you ever seen this ring before? He wore it in my store today. I remarked on it. That's a lie. I never saw that ring before in my life. Believe me. All right, Larkin, you want to ask him any questions? Questions? How can I ask him any questions about something I don't know anything about? It's just like I told you. I never killed a girl. I never even saw her. All right, Barton. I want a date. Your name? Luana Day. From the window in back of your place, you can see Betty McKeever's house, can't you? That's right. And you saw this man with Betty McKeever go in there this afternoon about 4 o'clock, is that right? I don't know. What? I wouldn't want to say, not for certain. You were heard to say this afternoon in front of a half a dozen witnesses. I just got a glimpse. I'm not that sure. All right, is it true that you saw a man go into Betty McKeever's house about his size, his build, his coloring, and dressed like he is? Well, yes. Uh, well, I guess, in, in general, it's shadowy in that alley. And like I said, I... You want to ask her any questions? Well, she said it wasn't me. Well, what more do you want? She said it could have been you. And that, coupled with this ring, is enough to hang you, Larkin. Now, you men have all heard the evidence. Just a minute, Mr. Prosecutor. We'll keep this thing according to the rules. Prisoner's got a chance to sum up his defense and make a closing statement. It's your say, Larkin. I told you before I didn't do it. And so help me, I didn't! I'll let the evidence stand by itself. All you men to feel he's guilty signify by... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Favor. All right, I know your name. What else should I know? Larkin here works for me. What's it all about? He's being tried for the murder of Betty McKeever, this town. Age 25. She was found this afternoon with her neck broken. We have good and sufficient reason to believe that Larkin is responsible. And we're giving him more than she had. A trial by jury. By whose authority? By the authority of this town. The people. You know of any better authority? Federal, for one thing. In this territory, uh, only a federal judge can try a murder case. A federal judge is a fat old man wearing a raggedy black coat who comes around only when he happens to remember that fly spot on the map is the town called Zebulon. No, thanks, friend. We have our own brand of justice here, and we're proud of it. And why are you hiding behind a mask? Mr. Favor, they got no witness. They got nothing. We have all the evidence we need. This ring, he was seen wearing it this afternoon. And you know where we found it, mister? In Betty McKeever's dead hand. It's not mine, Mr. Favor. I swear it. You call this justice? Two bits worth of cheap colored glass and silver. Not even a fat old man in a raggedy black coat could hang a man on the strength of that. Maybe. Maybe not. But we could. There isn't anything you can do about it. I got 25 men who might not agree with you. 25? We've got that many and 50 more. You bring your trash to Zebulon, I'll bury it for you. Let's get on with it. Hold it. You harm this man in any way, and there ain't gonna be a mask big enough for you to hide behind. You'll answer for it, and that's a promise. Get out of town, trash. 
Get out now! <laughs> Time to the wheel. All of you, watch and remember. The justice of Zebulon brooks no interference. Not from any man. Watch and remember. What do you want? Some garbage for you. Here's the rest of it. Catch. Carry the word to all drifters, drovers, and saddle tramps. Stay out of Zebulon. You all fully loaded. All right, let's move out. Yeah, where do you think you're going? I'm going to town, that's where I'm going. You are not. I need somebody to help me with Mr. Favor, that's you. But, but I got a right to tear up that town. You, nobody's gonna tear up nothing. Here, now what business have you got up? You're not fit to be up, get down there. You hear me, Quince? Nobody's going nowhere. Don't aim to cross you, Mr. Faber, but it's been decided. We're going to Zebulon. And none of you had come back. They got a small private army in there, plus a small private cemetery just for drovers and drifters. Anybody leaves here, they'll have to get past me. You know Johnny Larkin's dead, don't you? Look what they did to you. They dumped both your bodies beside the herd. Said something about garbage. As long as I'm running this herd, I'll run it my way. Now turn in. Well, all right. Me, for one, I, I hate to see him get away with it. Don't worry about that. Nobody's getting away with nothing. You want some coffee? better sense. You got no business up and you know it. That's so. Yeah, with a back like that, you ought to be down flat at least two days. Yeah, help me on with this. Oh. Boss, uh, about Larkin, just why was he hung? Girl was killed in town. He had a ring in her hand. They said it belonged to him. He said it didn't. A ring? Well, this it? They say it came with the rest of the trash. Yeah, that's it. I never saw it before. Neither did I. 
Quince. You're taking over till Rowdy gets back from Tiberon with his bunch. You've got two days to make the white water. Two days? At the outside. It'll be narrow if we do it at all. You've got to make it. It's been raining up in the Sangres. The river will be coming to flood. If you don't make it by tomorrow night, we'll lose a full week. So we'll cross it tomorrow night. Good. Hey, Zeus. Yeah? Give me a horse. A horse, senor Fever? That's right. Aren't you out of your mind? You belong in the wagon. Get the horse. Say, si, senor. What are you going to do? I got some business in town. Personal business. Well, now, stopping us from tearing up a town is one thing, but now this is sure another. You're not going in there alone. All or nobody, and I say all of us. Well, I got a better idea. There's laws against lynching and federal marshals to back it up. With one to every thousand square miles, how do you find him? You send men out, that's how. With no men to spare? You move the herd like I told you. Whitewater in two days. Got your word on it? You got it. Hey, your favor? Here, I'm not gonna let you do it. I don't see how you're gonna stop me. Well, it's just a matter of hunting one man down. I don't see any other way to do it except alone. I hear this. You stay out of this town. All of you. Mr. Faber, we all know how you feel. Every one of us. You ever been horsewhipped? No, I haven't. I don't think you do. Number eight, top of the stairs. That'll be four beds, sir. You were the one last night. You want the key back? Not till I get told different. The head of the regulators, the one they call the major. Where is he? I don't know. All right. Tell your sheriff I want to talk to her. Ain't got no sheriff. Just a deputy. Young fellow by the name of Roy Cutter. Was he around last night? Look, mister. Roy does like he's told. We all do. There's no standing against them. Be smart if you just rode back where you came from. How about a woman named Luana Day? Where is she? I said, where is she? She runs a saloon, the Cattleman's, across the street and down a ways. that business of yours. A horse whipping and a lynching makes it my business. I got the horse whipped, 
One of my crew got hung. So? So I just thought the law should be a little interested anyways. The three little monkeys, mister. Hear no, speak no, see no. That's all this law is interested in. Last night, I was over at Lathrop, looking for some stray stock. And I'm not making any money here. Deputy, maybe you'd better go look for some more stray stock for a couple of days. That ought to give me time to take the mask off this major fella. And don't worry about running along and tell him I'd like you to do that before you leave. Like Luana said, make yourself comfortable. favor, trail boss. Man with a memory and a stubborn streak to match. I know all about him, Roy. Anything else? He sent you a message. He said he wanted to see you without the mask. All right, Cutter. You ran your little errand. Why don't you go back and find your lost cows? I had that in mind. Major, that drover didn't come back to town alone just to take in the scenery. You know, Major, sometimes uh, a horse whipping can do that to the man. It can either break him or it can... Uh... Uh, pushes him back in the jungle. Unpredictable, primitive, dangerous. Capable of anything. I said we should have strung him up last night with the other one. And I'm saying it now. Finish him before he finishes one of us. Not one of you, Sam. Just me. He promised me that. Now I know he meant it. No. Hanging a murderer is one thing. But to flat out and out kill a man? It's the law of the jungle, Tom. Kill or be killed. Seems we don't have any other choice. Exactly the way I see it. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all, Major. There's got to be another way. Maybe there is, Tom. Maybe there is. Isn't that the old man in the cattle ride? I've noticed sometimes a certain kind of man, the best way to reach him is through someone else. Might work. Don't let there be any question marks about it, Sam. Make it convincing. Well, after last night, I figured you'd be dropping in on morticians, not the saloon keepers. I heal fast. And forget slow, huh, cowboy? Oh. All right, so I talk too much. Now, what'll it be? Just a name, lady. It goes with Major. Why me? You didn't seem too anxious for her. Barking to hang last night. Well, that doesn't mean I want to try my neck for size. Do you mind? Some pearls of wisdom, cowboy. I didn't come here for advice. Well, since it's free, you're going to get it anyway. The Cattleman's Saloon. Four walls, a ceiling that don't leak, some beat up old furniture, and a pretty fair stock of backcountry firewater. It's not much, but it's the walls of Jericho between me and the wolves. And it's all mine. You know why? Because I do what I'm told. When the regulators bark, I scream. And loud. I'm scared, cowboy. But I sleep nights. And that is the way the regulators keep it. Who are they? Just men. They don't advertise. They made a lot of noise last night. Look 
closely, cowboy. Under this war paint, there's a lot of mileage. I've been there. Dodge, Ellsworth, Libertyville, a bunch of open graves. Up until a year ago, Zebulon had them all beat. A man wasn't safe on the streets, and a woman. She wasn't safe anywhere. And the law just plain wasn't. Now, that's when the, the regulators moved in and they did a job that needed doing, and they made it stick. The Major, who is he? Didn't you get enough of that whip last night? Just what do you think you're trying? Cowboy, your friend Larkin, he killed her. What? I saw them go into her house. I heard them fight. You weren't so positive of that last night. Maybe I just didn't want to see a man hang. Maybe you just want to play it safe and keep your walls of Jericho from falling down. You don't want to believe it, do you? Cowboy, you have got one move straight out of town. Now, if you don't take it, you're dog meat. Your name, Faber? That's right. Friends looking for you. Over at the hotel. Little gent with whiskers. Have a nice little chat? <sighs> Sam. Made you don't like that, honey. Talking, honey. I would keep that in mind. Understand? <laughs> I said, get a doctor. I'm a doctor. It'll be all right to move him. I'll need some help. We'll take him upstairs. Resting easy now. You're gonna be all right. Aside from assorted bumps and bruises, he had quite a crack on the skull. You drove and seemed to be a hard headed lot. How much I owe you? No. I'll take no money for this. There's something else I'll take. Your promise to leave town. He isn't the first man I've patched up like this. You won't be the last. My advice is to take it in the spirit it's meant. Maybe I shouldn't try to outguess the regulators, but... Go ahead, try. I'd say it's meant as a warning to you and your friend. And they mean right now. Wouldn't hurt to move him. He could rent a wagon at the livery. Matter of fact, I'm going right past there. I could ask him to hold one for you. You do that. Then you'll be leaving? Yeah, as soon as I finish what I come for. It's you against 50 men. Just one man. That's all I want. You find him. Then what? Call a meeting in an hour at your place. 
it didn't take? He made up his mind. So have I. I'm not very hungry. What happened? Well, I come to town looking for you when a couple of those laughing boys in black found me first. Said if we didn't disappear, there was going to be a couple of fresh, unmarked graves in the town plot. Next thing I knew, here I am. I told you to stay with the herd. Well, there was something to come up, something you ought to know. You better be good. <laughs> And in my pants. This is the ring that they said that Larkin had. Said he didn't know anything about it. And what about it? Well, I was going through his things to send to his folks, and on the bottom of his possible bag, I found these. Just as I like as peas in a pod. He must have been passing them out like cotton candy in every town we hit. There's no doubt about it. Johnny Larkin did have that ring. He said different and he lied. Yeah, well, it don't change anything. Well, if it don't, it should. He killed a girl and he swung for it. That finishes it. Hey, you, maybe. Not me. Oh, boss. What they did to us, it'll heal. Outside of a few scars, Zebulon will just be a bad dream. It'll go away. You make anything more of it, it won't. It'll fester till it kills you. Ah, it's their poison. Let them live with it. After I get my men. Who appointed you the avenging angel of death? Man in a mask. All right. Go on and kill him, or get killed. You don't make any mistake about it. You're not doing this for Johnny Larkin or justice or anything else. You're just a man that got horsewhipped and can't live with it. It's easier to live with, anyway. Oh, the regulators? They don't bother me, and I don't bother them. What then? Man like you wouldn't understand. Oh, try me. All my life, as long as I can recollect, I've wanted to be a lawman. Oh, that may not mean much to you, but that's what I wanted. Three years ago, old Sheriff Heineke took me on here. Deputy! I worked. Worked hard at everything. Especially my gun. I got good. Fast and fancy. First time I really had to use it, I froze. I ran away and hid under a bottle. That's my little problem. They got no guts. I'm a coward. Said you wouldn't understand. <laughs> uh, the way you talk, you make it sound like being a coward is like being an Irishman or six feet tall or having blue eyes. You can't change any of those things. You can change being a coward. The 
die anytime you want to. You get chances every single day. All you got to do is stand up, just even a little bit. Like right now. Who is he, this Major? I'll give you a clue. Yeah, I know. Get out of town. Somebody else tell you? Oh, everybody's been real big on that. It never come to you that the Major, the rest of them might be right? Cutter. All that it'd take is one strong man, one strong lawman to handle this whole town. That could be you. You think so? Well, you had us a strong lawman, old Heineke. He couldn't do a thing. You want to know how the regulators started? There's a drover in jail one night for drunk. Right in here. A bunch of his friends came over to bust him out. There was a gunfight. The one I told you about where I didn't do so good. That was over, old Heineke was dying, and there was a little boy outside. He was dead. Hit by a wild shot. That's how the regulators started. Next day, his father got a bunch of men together. Oh, Cutter, all I want is a name. Just one lousy little name. Dig your own grave. I'm not going to dig it for you. Till you go back where you belong. What are you all afraid of? I ain't fighting the town. All I want is one man. A year ago, it was only one man, too. That's the way it started. But we all got involved in it. That was when that sheriff was killed and that kid. Jody Wallace, eight years old. That's what I mean. That's what happens when... Then his father's name would be... Dr. Wallace, the Major. It's just a name. Forget it. Look, you've got no business with Wallace. I told you this morning the drover was guilty. You told me a lot of things. What did you want me to say? You walk in here with a face like death and expect me to point the way for what? So you can kill a man for doing what he thought was right. Did he? You sure Larkin wasn't just another bunch of flowers for his kid's grave? I don't know, and I don't care. Well, I do. Favor. You can't win. Supposing you do kill him before somebody kills you. Don't you know you'll hang for it? It just came out. It was an accident. I was trying to explain the good you've done, and... Well, I said more than I meant to. That's all. That's all. All Favor has to do is check the public records and he'll have Jody's name and mine. I'm sorry. You are for a fact, Roy. About as sorry an excuse for a man as I know. All right, Major. What do we do now? What we should have done last night. Hang him. Wait a minute. On what charge? Like I said before, hanging a man for a killing is one thing, but this is going to... You were quick enough to join in last night. That was an execution. So is this. The only question is, do you execute favor before he commits murder? Or afterwards? What about the rest of you? We'll get the men, call out the town, everybody. As for you, Roy, I think you've outlived your usefulness to us. You've got till sunup to pack. Better warn you, all I'd need is the least little excuse from any one of you. 
Isn't that funny? Without your black mask, you almost look like human beings. What do you want? Like I told you, Doctor, just one man. You. Favor. Deputy, you better run along. There must be some stray stock somewhere. No need to run, Roy. We've nothing to fear from our archangel of vengeance here. You see, what he's here for, it's not a thing every man can do. It takes a special breed of man to kill in cold blood. Nothing special about pulling a trigger, Wallace. Just how you do it. Only difference between you and me, I don't need to hide behind any mask or torchlight trial. Justice is justice, Favor. Every man that we tried, including that murderer you call friend, was given a fair hearing. No man was executed without cause. No man was punished without good reason. Including you. Spare me the righteous indignation, Favor. I've heard too much of it from too many men who tried to bend the truth their way. Go on, pull the trigger. I challenge you to use that gun. Like I said, I'm not going to dig your grave for you. Quite right, Roy. We'll do that for him. Get started, Sam. Tell him to set up for a trial. A short trial. last night. You all know why this man came back. He came here to commit murder, to destroy the very justice that we all of us are pledged to uphold. We voted, we came to a decision. Your decision, Zebulon's decision. This man must hang. If for no other reason, and to protect what is right. To show the world that here in this town, no one man has the right to take the law into his own hands. All right, see to it. Not yet, Mr. Executioner. Not till it's all been said. Please get out of here before you get hurt again. You can't change anything. Well, neither can this rope. The regulators issue only one warning, friend. You've had yours. Major! You said this was our decision. Not yours, not just the regulators. If he's got something to say, I think we should all listen. Very well. Just make it short. Short and sweet. You use that rope on Mr. Favor, you're gonna have to try me out for size, too. Because if you don't, I'll be back. And for the very same reason that he came back. Only I won't be alone. There's 25 cow pushers out there that'll take this just as personal as I will. It don't matter how many guns you got, we'll still come. And we won't leave until every one of you have answered for this. Not last night, just this. And it won't be just them. It'll be some of you, too. Maybe even some of us. And why? Because you stood by and let a bunch of masked vultures hang a man for thinking. Not committing a crime, just thinking about one. Very well, that's all. No, Major. There's more. No. You start hanging somebody for what they think about doing, this town will end up a cemetery. Better a cemetery than what it was. Go back to your saloon, Luana, and think about it. Think about that very carefully. I just did. Very carefully. I told Favor your name. Does that make me a candidate for this? And what about Roy? He told Favor about your son. When will he be next? And what about the rest of you? When was the last time that you crossed one of our black-robed disciples of virtue? 
When will you be next? I'm not in the habit of repeating myself, Luana. Go back to your saloon and stay there until you hear from me. The hanging, gentlemen. No. There'll be no more hanging here. Maybe it took this. Maybe it took what Favor came here to do, but it's over. Through. There'll be no more revenge for your son's death. No more graves to help him rest in peace. He'll never rest in peace. Not until we've made this town a decent place to live. With horse whippings and lynchings? With tar and feathers and fear? With whatever it takes to do the job. No, Major. There'll be no more regulators. It's over. I've warned you, Roy, now I... Lower the guns, boys. There'll be no more killing here. Take off the masks. There's nothing to hide from now. All right, go on home, folks. There's nothing more to see here. Well, you can go back to your cattle drive, Mr. Favor. Federal Marshal will finish up here. Or well, maybe just one good lawman, huh? All I got to say is whatever he and the rest of those regulators get, they had it coming. A man shouldn't take the law in his own hands. It says so in the book. Come on, Wish. We got a herd to catch. Oh, uh, favor. I have a question. Were you really gonna kill him? Him? Kill a man in cold blood? Never. You weren't going to, were you? I guess we'll never know. Keep them.